Hello, Olivia here. I'd like to take you through a nice follow along session which will work on some legs apart movements, some spinal rotation and side bending, and also some hip flexor and quadricep exercises and piriformis. Now I am seated here on a pile of exercise mats in our monkey gym. I'm going to use this because it's a nice support for the sequence I'm going to take you through. It's likely that you don't have a pile of exercise mats where you do your stretching exercises. Um, so alternatives would be a couch or even the mattress of your bed would work well. Just need a little bit of height for this sequence. So let's get started. To begin with, we're going to do a sumo position. Often you do it up here, but because I've got this pile of mats, I can do two things. First of all, there's no strength required because I'm fully supported on my buttocks. And also notice that I've got the side of my lower legs on the support here so I can really feel what's happening. So sit up nice and tall and now ask yourself how can I use the muscles at the back of my hips to pull the knees as wide apart as possible and you'll feel them pressing firmly into whatever you're supported on. Keep going with that you might feel some real cramping sensations come into the hips here and then relax and then try that again. So you're using the muscles at the back of the hips in order to pull the knees wide and you might be getting a bit of a stretch through here. Now if you find that it's not enough of a stretch then you simply move your hips forward a little bit and then you're effectively having the legs wider and wider. Now you can also use your arms to press back a little bit but more particularly we'll use the arms as a resistance for a contraction. So hold the legs completely still and try and pull them together against the resistance of your arms for five, four, three, two, one, stop, take a big breath in, sit up nice and tall and again use the muscles at the back of the hips to pull the legs wider and if you need to do one more adjustment to come forward a little bit further, have a go at that. Breathe deeply, good, wriggle around a little bit. I like to add some movements of all varieties to what's essentially a static position to begin with. All right, now just take your bottom back a little bit and we're going to go into the spinal work. To begin with, just go into a gentle forward bend. Let the head hang forward. It doesn't matter if the knees come together a little bit in this position. And then just walk the hands around on the floor towards one foot. Just adding a little bit of side bending, but your, your spine is flexed at this point. Then go around in the other direction, breathing into the back of the body. Coming back to the middle. Good. Take a breath in, come up onto straight arms, and so now your back is reasonably straight. Lift the chest along the plane of the floor, so you're trying to straighten the back as much as you can. Think about sticking your bottom out behind you, and then just play with bending forward with that back as straight as you can. Good. And again, now holding the spine in a straight position, walk the hands around towards one side and repeat the moving your chest along the plane of the floor because your hands are on the floor you could try a attempt to drag the hands back towards whatever you're sitting on all aimed to get the spine a bit straighter and then go around in the other direction Come back to the middle, hand up, hand up, breath in, and come up nice and gently. Wriggle around. All right, now we'll do a little bit of rotation work. So one hand comes to the opposite ankle. To begin with, this arm is bent, the other hand's on the knee. Lengthen the spine as much as you can, and then pull with the bottom arm and push with the top arm. Turn the head as well, involve the neck in this movement. Again, effort to straighten the spine, pull with the bottom arm, push with the top arm. Breathe. Where can you breathe into? In the ribs, in the abdomen, into the sides of the body as well. Good. All right, let yourself unwind a bit and now let yourself hang off the straight, the bottom arm I should say, now it's quite straight. Again, lift the chest and now try rotating in this position. 
should feel it in a different part of the torso because now you're not over towards that leg, you're hanging away from it. Good. All right, and to finish off with, take the top arm up, reach it up, lift the chest, and then actively reach it behind you. Breathe. Big deep breaths into the top of the chest and focus on breathing into the top side, side that's now facing the ceiling. And slowly coming down. And same thing on the second side. So reach across, holding down near the front of the ankle there. First position was the bottom arm is bent and you're pulling towards that leg. Other hands on the top of the knee there and twisting around. Chest up so that you're keeping the spine as long as you can and then adding the rotation. Breathe. How does it feel on this side compared with that first side? All right, and now straighten the bottom arm, hang off it. And all the work now is being done by the top hand. Push the hand down through the knee. Could you make the spine a little bit straighter? Rotate. All right, and now top arm, reach it up, lift the chest and actively reach the arm out of the body and pull the shoulder back. For me, this is a much tighter direction, much tighter. Just feels like I can't reach as comfortably as I could on the first side. Couple more breaths. And slowly come back. Take a breath in and press yourself up. Good, wriggle around. Okay, side bending now. Slowly lower yourself down. You may find that you can get the whole of the side of your body resting comfortably on the leg here. You can have the hand there, reach it through, whatever works for you. Other hand, put it on the other knee and lift the chest and then use the hand on the knee to slowly lever your body to the side. As well, I'm trying to keep this knee back. Now for me, this gives me all sorts of interesting sensations at the back of the hip here and some stretching in the waist in particular. Breathe comfortably. Find a relaxed position for your head and neck. It might be looking to the front. You might find looking down towards the floor is more comfortable. Good. All right, now have a little play with rolling the top shoulder forward and then come back to where the shoulders are pretty much above it, one above the other. And then roll the shoulder back even more and more effort to lever yourself to the side. If you feel like this bottom arm is inhibiting that movement, rearrange it so that you can feel yourself going further to the side. Good. Again, roll the top shoulder back a little bit more. Make sure that the hip that you're bending away from is staying firmly planted on whatever you're sitting on. Good. All right, now slowly take this arm up, reach it up to the ceiling. Push the hip back onto the support, reach up, reach up, and then slowly take the arm over as much as you want and actively reach that arm out of the body. Doesn't have to go all the way over towards the head, it's the length between the fingertips and the hip here. Breathe deeply into the side that you're stretching. Good. All right, bring the arm up to vertical, lever the bottom shoulder through a little bit more towards camera, and then the same movement we did a moment ago, see how that feels now. So there's a side bending component, a rotation, and a reaching with the top arm. Breathe as deeply as you can right up towards the armpit.
All right. Oh, that just feels marvelous in the ribs in particular today. Okay, second side. So you're coming down. It doesn't matter if you can't get the body right on the leg. You're just coming down as far as comfortable. Put the hand somewhere. And let the head and neck relax. So not much effort of any sort being done. You're literally just draping to the side. Do try and keep the knee you've bent away from back a little bit. Good. Okay, roll the top shoulder forward. Push the knee back. Keep that buttock on your support. Then come back to where the shoulders are one above the other. Relax the head and neck. Same action of trying to lengthen the spine, still bending to the side. And then see if you can roll the top shoulder back a little bit. I'm turning the head and neck and keep that hip firmly planted on your support. Breathe. For me, this is a much stronger stretch in the side here and it's much higher up in the rib cage. How does it feel in your body one side compared to the other? Good. All right, now this arm comes up just to about vertical. Again, think about lengthening the spine. It's always a chest, a long movement. And then reach the arm over. You might find you need it a bit further to the front to be comfortable, particularly in that shoulder. Now actively reach the arm off the body and pull the hip back onto the support. Breathe. Lever the bottom shoulder through a little bit further. Reposition the hand as you need to. All right, and then bring the arm up again. Lift the chest, straighten the spine and finish off with that same rotation movement. Actively reach the top arm out of the shoulder joint and over. Breathe. One more breath. And come back to the middle. Hands on knees, take a breath in. Up you come. Wriggle around. Oh, that just feels so good. Love side bending. Okay, feet. Feet and toes. All of these little exercises will do now. They could be done standing, but that um, can put quite a bit of load through the toes and the foot. Instead, we're going to do it in this seated position. So the first one is toes like this, and you're going to see how far you can actively lift the heel away from the floor. And then if you find that's not enough of a stretch, reposition yourself so that you've got a bit more load coming through the toes. You could also press down with the hand or the forearm there. And then with the heel held up as far as you can from the floor, do some side to side movements. So I'm letting the weight come right down through the big toe joint. And then I'm going to try and lift the heel a little bit more. Little cramp there. Go back into the position. At any point you could do a, a contraction. So here the weight is focused or the bend is focused in the big toe. So I'm just going to try and press the big toe into the ground for three, two, one. Stop and see if you can lift the heel a little bit more. And then go to being centered over the middle toe. Do a contraction with the second and third toes and stop and then towards the little toe side of the foot. Good. You may well find that when you're in that position that you start to get some sensations all the way through this part of the ankle here. Totally up to you how much load you have, where you distribute the weight. And then some slow movement side to side. How does that feel? Are you able to relax at all or are you just persevering with these movements in your foot? Good. Okay, 
other direction now. Toes like this, move them back so that they're fully tucked under. Try not to contract with the, the muscles here on those insoles because they'll cramp and that's uncomfortable. Here, just moving my weight forward a little bit without falling off my support. That's a very, very, very strong stretch in so many different places, all the way up through here. Because I'm on the center of the foot, it's powerfully pulling up through here. Add a little bit of weight if you want to. All right, same as we did when the toes were the other way, move the weight more towards the big toe. And then to the middle of the foot, Position your weight wherever you need to in relation to the foot to get a stretch. And then, here's the fun one, collapse to the little toe side of the foot. Very strong sensation through here and again up through the outside of the ankle. Can you relax the foot as you add these movements to it? All right, and push the foot out to the front and just try spreading the toes moving them around. Okay, other side. So, bend the toes this way, you're centered at the moment, and then you're just gonna move around a little bit so you get some bend happening and load it up as much as is comfortable for you. Reposition the hips, whatever you need to do, a little bit more load. This foot for me is way looser, so this is nowhere near as strong a sensation as my first side. All right, so changing where the load is through the toes. Now it's all into the big toe joint. It's interesting how that particular line brings on a cramp in the calf. Good. And again, if you find it's cramping, then don't do so much work of pulling the heel up. Rather, use the weight of your body to load it up. Okay, let's do a contraction just with the big toe. Try and push it down through the floor. Three, two, one, stop and see if you can go a little bit more and then move to the middle of the foot do a contraction with the second and third toes can you isolate just those two toes when you're trying to do the contraction that's quite difficult and then over to the little toe side of the foot how does your second foot compare to the first one and come back shake out if you ever do get a, a cramp there, just go like this. Come out, pull the toes back, and you'll, the cramp will go away straight away. Okay, other direction. Toes like this. Again, a reminder to not strongly contract the muscles on the base of the foot. They're liable to cramp there. Okay, position yourself wherever you need to. I need to take the knee quite a bit further forward on this side to get that stretch in the toes. And then try coming to the big toe side. And then the middle of the foot. And then the little toe side. Another way you can get a little bit more load is to press down with the opposite arm. That's really sending my weight down through that little toe line of that foot. And out you come, press the foot to the front and wriggle the toes around. Can you spread them apart? Good. Okay, the next little sequence is to target this line through here. So quadriceps and hip flexors and we'll also hopefully get it deep, deep into the deeper hip flexors but also all of the abdominal muscles will get a good stretch. This one's done in a lunge position. So one st step, foot steps forward, the other one out to the back here. And we can come down as deep as we can. You may find that you can get the whole of the thigh onto the mat. For me, the very top is not quite on there today. That doesn't matter. I'm resting on one elbow and this other arm, I'm just gonna rest it here. And just feel what that feels like. Let your abdomen relax completely. Ideally, we want the ankle underneath the knee or forward of the knee, but if you need to, you can have it back a little bit further. And even though I'm introducing this as a hip flexor quad stretch, 
all of these muscles are now under a gentle stretch as well. So how does it feel through here? How does it feel in this hip area? Let's do a contraction there. Try and press the front foot's heel straight down through the floor. You could add a pulling the heel back movement as well for five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Take a breath in and sink a little bit deeper. So now, just after doing that first contraction, the whole of the front of my back leg is completely supported on this pile of mats here. Good. Okay, now actively try and stretch the leg that's on the support out behind you. Using the glutes to do that, trying to reach it out, reach it out. And let's do a contraction where you're trying to press the front of that foot straight down into the mat. Now we're getting into some bigger muscles here, so put a bit of effort into this. Really try and press down for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly stop. Take a breath in, sag a little bit more. And now tuck the toes of the back foot under and press out through that heel. Press out, press out, press out. You'll feel the knee start to lift up. And now we do a contraction where we're trying to scissor the legs together. So push, drag, and try and drag the leg on the support through for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly stop. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, let the hips sink down. And again, press out through that back heel. All right, now I'll leave it up to you whether you keep the back foot toes tucked under or you relax it so the top of the foot's on the mat. Now, keeping your hip down on the support or where as close as it currently is for you, slowly using your arms rather than your back muscles, start to bring yourself to a more upright position. And you might not be that far up. You might be arms bent still, that doesn't matter. Coming up, put the other hand on the knee here Take a deep breath in and really lift the chest. So I'm thinking about lifting my abdomen away from my pelvis, if that makes any sense. A real lengthening through the front of the body there. And then I can use both arms to bring myself more upright. Try not to involve the lower back muscles because you don't want them to cramp. Good. All right, let's repeat that scissoring contraction. So off you go, you're trying to pull the back leg through the support and push and drag the front leg for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly stop contracting, take a deep breath in and as you breathe out, let the hips sink onto the support. Another big breath in, lift the chest and see if you can take the shoulders back a tiny bit further. And now make sure you're fully balanced and then have a go at trying to bring this other arm up. And reach it off the body and use the hand on the front knee to leave yourself back just a little bit further. Breathe as deeply as you can into your belly. Good. One more. A little bit of effort involved in this position. And then bring the arm down and lower yourself down. Press back with the arms. Stand up briefly and shake things out. All right, let's do the other side. I'll move my little stretching buddy. Okay, so lunge to begin with. Good. And feel what that feels like. Haven't done anything yet. Just got into the initial lunge position. And just gauge how much of the front of your back leg is on the support here. Mine is much higher on this side, which tells me I'm a bit tighter on this right side. Good. How does it feel through this part of the front leg? How does it feel in the hip of the front leg? Good. Relax the belly. Wriggle around. Side to side, I mean. Good. Okay, let's do the contraction for the front hip. Press the foot through the floor 
and you're trying to drag the heel back. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, sink a little bit deeper. And do you find now that more of the front of that back leg is on the support? Good. Okay, actively try and stretch the back leg out of the hip, real lengthening action. And then the first contraction is to press the front of that foot down through the support for five, four, three, three, keep going, two, one, slowly stop, take a deep breath in, sink the hips even more. Tuck the toes of the back foot underneath, keep the hip on the support, and then press out through the heel, press out, find the knee will come up off the support, press out, and now let's do that scissoring contraction. So both legs involved, scissoring the back leg through the support, push and hook the front foot through the mat. Three, two, one, slowly stop. Sink the hips deeper, relax your abdomen. Up to you what you do with the back foot. Tuck down or stretch the foot out. And now using your arms, not your back muscles, to come as upright as you can. Make sure you're supported. Lift the chest, pressing back with both arms, trying to keep the front of your leg on the support mats. Good. I am much tighter on this side. I can't quite keep the top of the leg down and I can't bring the chest as upright. Let's do a different contraction here. Think about using your abdominal muscles to press down through the mat. Hand on the mat, hand on the knee, press, 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 press. And relax, take a breath in, lift the chest. And after that contraction, now I can come up comfortably, a little bit higher. All right, make sure you're balanced because you're going to take the hand off the support. Reach it up, lift the chest, reach the arm off the body. Relax the hip, pull it back down onto the mat, and then slowly lever yourself back. Use the arm on the support knee there rather than your back muscles. Reach up, big deep breaths into the lowest part of your abdomen there. Do you feel a stretch there? On this side, I've got a really strong stretch right down below my belly button. All right, coming out. And use the arms to come up. Oh. And shake out. How does it feel now after you've done both sides? You do some little hip circles. Whew, that one takes quite a bit of work. All right, to finish off with piriformis stretch done on your same support. Position yourself towards the edge a little bit, not, not so much that you feel like you're going to fall off. I've got about a 90 degree angle here in this front leg's knee. And all I'm going to do with this leg is have it out to the side rather than stretch it out behind us that we normally would. Of course, you can do it like that if you want to, but have a play with this version. So here, I'm going to work it sitting up as tall as I can. And I'm going to put the hand here, or I can hold the outside of the mat, whatever you can comfortably get to. And I'm going to use that as a little lever to push myself to the side. Still very comfortable because this leg is also supporting me. I feel very stable. And then the other hand, grab onto something and use it also as a lever to pull yourself forward. But all the while, every time you breathe in, you're trying to take the chest along so your back is as straight as possible. As well, try and stick your bottom out behind you. It's that tilting of the pelvis that will get you into piriformis on this leg side. Good. So every time you breathe in, a little effort to lengthen the spine, stick the bottom out behind you, and then use the two arms with a combination of levering the body and pulling it further forward. Good. 
Let's do a contraction here. The outside of this foot, you're trying to sweep it through the support for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly stop contracting. Big breath in, relax. Another big breath in, same actions. Lengthen the spine, lever. Perhaps you can go a little bit further forward. And now reach this arm out. Ideally we want it in line with the spine, but don't worry too much about that. And then actively reach out. That's a really big way to pull on the stretch in the piriformis there. Breathe. A couple more breaths. So even with this leg not out behind you, it's still a very powerful stretch for piriformis. And this action of reaching out is what really pulls on. Fabulous stretch there. All right, slowly come up. If you need to, I like to do this between sides. Stand up, shake it out. How does it feel? All right. One more side. So roughly 90 degree angle at the knee. Make sure you're stable and comfortable on this support. And this other leg's just out to stabilize you. Every breath in, you're making that action of trying to lengthen the spine. The hand holding the foot, use it to lever your body to the side. And that doesn't mean hook the shoulders around the corner. That means lever the whole rib cage to the side. And then the other hand you can use as a gentle pulling forward force. Can you stick your bottom out behind you with the emphasis being on of the side you're stretching? Good. How does this side feel compared to the first side? For me, this is a very gentle stretch. The other side was quite intense. All right, let's do our contraction. So the outside of the foot up here on the support, you're trying to sweep it through for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly stop contracting. Relax. And then away you go, making an effort to lengthen the spine. Lever, come forward more, breathing deeply, and then this arm comes up and actively reach it off the body. Stick your bottom out behind you. Breathe. Couple more breaths. And to come out, bring the arm here and lift up to support. Jump up and wriggle around. I think that'll do for this session. See you next time.